So you bought yourself a new Schwinn aluminum comp. Congratulations. Maybe you got a boundary or a TAF or a TAF comp or even a mongoose like the mongoose Durham. And you're happy with your bike. You finally got one after last year. We couldn't even get bikes. And now you want to upgrade it, get a wider range because depending upon your bike, you may have a freewheel on it. And on most three by bikes, if it has three by seven, you're going to have this at the back. This is a 14 to 28 tooth freewheel. They probably made billions of these. But in 2020, we got lucky and we started getting these. These are wider range freewheels, still a freewheel. And I'm going to talk about the difference between a freewheel and a cassette in just a moment. But these went from 14 to 28 tooth to 14 to 38 tooth. There's even 42 tooth versions of these, some of those eight speeds. And then there's even a nine speed freewheel, which Start getting into some questionable territory there. We'll talk about that. But a lot of people are now asking me, how do I get a cassette on my aluminum comp? As a matter of fact, this is the aluminum comp's wheel. See, I put this freewheel on it. It, didn't, it came with a 14 to 28 tooth, but I put this wider range freewheel on it. But they got their aluminum comp or other bike that has a freewheel. And they've seen my videos like that. They want that cassette on the bike. That's an entirely different setup. And it... Cassettes bring many, many advantages, one of which is range. Just look at this. 14 to 28, 14 to 38. I don't know what the low gear is on this. Probably this is a 15 to 46. That, I believe, is an 11 to 50 on the boundary there. That's the Box 3 Prime 9. I know it's 50. There are even 52s on cassettes, even larger. The reason that a cassette can go so large versus a freewheel is because of the way it mounts. Because there's a hub that this mounts onto and it gets so confusing the way this is named. And I know that's where a lot of people email me in there. Well, I have a free hub, but I want to take the free wheel off of it. Well, no, there is a free wheel. And then there's a free hub, which is the body that this goes on to. And I'm going to try not to get too technical, but let me see if I can find a hub so I can show you. I thought I was going to be out of luck, but the bike barn provides. Here, get the dork disc. A lot of people don't like these. Get rid of that. But I recommend leaving those, by the way, because it protects your spokes in case your chain ever comes off on the low side. But what I have here is a wheel set. This is, I don't know what bike this is off of, but this is a free wheel. And I don't know how well you can see, but there are threads. See those threads? That's for a free wheel. Here's our 14 to 28 tooth, and you see the threads there? And the way this goes on, it just simply threads on. And it'll even tighten itself down when you ride it. I mean, they're pretty foolproof. But you can see that that's on there now. That thread's on. So free wheel threads on. These threads go on to that. The cassette, though, look at this. Tell that's different. And a lot of times, this is only an 8-speed. If you get like a 9-speed, a 10-speed, these will be separate gears. So they'll go on loosely. But look at that. No threads. Just these little spline cutouts. And that is because... Show you a wheel set here. Look at this. There's our free wheel setup. See the threads. But this is the free hub. This is what a cassette goes on and how this mounts. There's one little notch that's smaller. Let's see if I can do this trying to look through the camera. There we go. And it just slides on to this free hub body. And then there's a lock, a little lock ring that goes there and tightens down and keeps this in place. So that threads on. This literally slides on. But you can see very different. Thread on, slide down, and then there's a lock ring that holds it in place. So you can't just put this wheel out of the way. And we can't just put this on here. There's no way to keep it on there. So that doesn't work. And that's why I made this video. So many people asking me, how do I get a cassette onto my aluminum comp wheel? Well, you can't. So how do you get the cassette onto like the boundary? How did I do that? Well, I bought a new wheel set. And the new wheel set came with a free hub. Didn't come with this free wheel thing. And see how that gets confusing? Free wheel, free hub. And I think that's why so many people 
are confused, especially when you're starting to look at specs and there's all this stuff and a lot of it sounds the same. But the two ways to do this, to convert a bike, like an aluminum comp or a boundary, something like that, that has a free wheel from the factory, to convert that to a cassette, you're going to have to either replace the wheel set, which is what I do because it's more economical for me and easier for me because I, I get those like those, that cycle dual wheel sets, pay like 150 bucks. Comes with a free hub so I can put on a cassette. Or you can do something like this and buy a new hub. And you can have that hub laced onto the existing wheels. So you see here, look at that. There's that free hub body. And the cassette can go right down on this. And you can see the rest of the hub there. Looks very similar in this one, quick release as well. And by the way, most freewheel setups have an axle. I'll talk about that in just a second, the reason for that. And also the reason why they don't go super wide range with a freewheel. But here we go. You buy a hub here and you can have it laced on to the wheels. Just take these spokes off, take the hub out, relace the spokes into here, into the wheels, tighten it, true it, and it's all good. Except that's not easy. I'm going to be honest. Now, there are people that are masters of that, but that is not easy. I've seen some big, big YouTubers, some hardcore bikers that do not lace in their own hubs. They pay a bike shop to do it. It's usually about 45 bucks. My local bike shop won't even do it voluntarily. I mean, if I went in out for, you know, hey, I really have to have this, they would do it. But there's no telling how much they would charge me. Most shops I've called around charge about 45 bucks. But still, it's not something that regular person can do. That's why, or that I have patience for. And that's why I buy new wheel sets. But that's your only two options if you want a cassette. And you have an aluminum comp, something that had a free wheel. You can either get this laced on, buy a hub, have it laced on the wheels. And by the way, these, you know, that's a cost you're going to probably have $100 in the hub and the labor at least just to convert it or buy a new wheel set that already has it. But that's what it takes. Where's my little guide here? There we go. Yeah, see, that's that. Ooh, that's good, good and clicky. That's what it takes. By the way, these JG Bike hubs, I bought this. I haven't used it. Because they're kind of heavy. So just FYI, if you see those on Amazon or somewhere else, they're, they're a bit heavy comparatively to what I would expect for going aftermarket with the hub. I mean, if you're paying, you might as well get something lightweight. Long story short of this, if you want to convert your free wheel equipped big box bike to a cassette, you're going to need to either get a new wheel set or have your hub swapped out so that you can use a cassette and get this wide, wide range now, that begs the question, why can't you get wide range with a free will? Well, that's a good question, and there's a reason for that. Here, I'll just use this hub as an example. You see, I've already slid in the free will down, or the cassette, rather, down onto it. And I, I hope I haven't been doing that. Sometimes I'll be talking about them, and I'll go cassette when I mean free will. But free will threads, cassette, slides onto the free hub. So just note that if I misspoke at any point. But... The benefits to this is where the bearings are in this setup. And I'm not pointing actual here, but there are bearings in this. And on, say, this side, they might be right here. But on this side, they might be all the way out here. So you can extend that gearing out, get a wider, larger range, and you've got more support. Secondary prop, and I can use this pencil to demonstrate the difference between a freewheel setup and a free hub or cassette set up as far as strength. The reason you can go further out with a cassette. So let's just say you wanted to put stress, downward stress, on both sides of this pencil. So pressing down there, pressing down there, that's going to create weakness somewhere in this pencil. You could support it under the bottom. And let's say you have a free will set up, your supports might only be right here. So that leaves a lot more unsupported area for downward force to go on, which can easily bend an axle with a lot of strain on it, like, say, you know, mountain biking. Or you could have something like this. 
that hub for a cassette, that might be supported. Its bearings are way out here. So you can put a lot more stress on the end. And I, I hope that's a good example. So just know that on this freewheel setup, your bearings are very close in. And on a cassette setup, your bearings are further out, adding more support. So there's other things to factor in, but that's a rudimentary example of why you can go wider range with cassettes than you can with a freewheel. And again, we're starting to see even a nine speed freewheel, but I've already warped one of those. I don't even know if I made a video on that. It's just very easy to do to warp an axle when you're on a freewheel setup because it isn't supported as wide as it is with this type setup where those bearings are, they're further out. And there you go. You can't put a cassette onto a freewheel equipped wheel set. You either are going to need to swap out the hub for the free hub that will accept the cassette or put an entirely new wheel set on the bike, which is what I usually do. It's just cheaper and easier for me. But there are the two options. And I hope this helps you out. A lot of people recently asking this, so comment below if you found this informative. I like to tailor my videos to make sure that I'm providing first some entertainment, but second, some infotainment. So you take something from it, maybe save people some money and get what they want right out of the gate. So no, cassette on a freewheel equipped bike, very different setup, but you can do it two ways. You can either put a new hub on the wheel or like I do it just another entire new wheel set that will accept a cassette and open up the wonders of the wide range which especially with the one buys make it so so much better so comment below if you found this video helpful thank you for watching Kev Central really appreciate it have a great day